Hello, everyone. Welcome to ACCAP APM Advanced Performance Management Orientation Session for December 23. And this is your instructor, Rizwan Mania. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I welcome you all again to this fantastic orientation session for advanced performance management. This orientation session will definitely give you the idea about the paper APM and what is the difference between APM and performance management paper that you have covered before. Plus, you will also understand how I will teach this paper at WIFI. WIFI is an online approved learning partner, having a goal status providing ACCA students education since last five years in 100 plus countries. At WIFI, we strive for quality. We believe in giving best quality education to our students. This is Rizwan Mania, your APM tutor and the CEO at WIFI. <clears throat> now, let's proceed ahead with the session. And uh, about myself includes 15 years of teaching experience, more than 15 years of teaching experience. My areas of expertise include performance management, financial management, and advanced performance management. I have taught more than 6,000 students, <coughs> both locally and internationally. I have conducted ACCA P2P webinars that ACCA used to conduct earlier by the brand name of P2P, and I've conducted six advanced performance management webinars and eight performance management webinars. Other than that, at WIFI, uh, we offer these free webinars every quarter uh, for each and every paper, and those are available on our WIFI's official YouTube channel. <coughs> now, <coughs> first of all, why experience about the paper? Uh, <coughs> normally, I have heard a lot of times from students uh, one simple thing that is APM difficult. My friends are saying it is difficult. Someone else is saying it is difficult. You need to realize one thing. Every professional paper is difficult, whether it's APM, AFM, uh, AAA or ATX. What is important? The important thing is you need to raise yourself. You need to raise your performance. If you fulfill the standard required by the examiner, you can easily pass any of the ACC exams. So what I feel is this paper is very important, a very good paper, a paper that prepares you for future entrepreneurship. Plus, the paper prepares you to work at the strategic level at any organization. So this paper is about business. It's about strategy. And what I've seen, students who understand the questions well, the requirements well, really perform good in this paper. But it doesn't mean that if you are not good in understanding the question requirements, don't worry. With me using my APM portal, is this will become really, really easy. The way I will explain the things, the way I will organize the things, the way I've covered my past papers, you can easily manage things in a very planned and uh, organized way. So if you're not good un in understanding the question requirements, I'm here. I will give you so many techniques to understand the question requirements in a very proper manner. Similarly, those students who are good in writing the answers really perform well in this exam. So one who are already good, it's a good news for you. But those who struggle in writing or drafting the answers, so don't worry again if you are committed and if you will follow the plans, whatever I will give you during these three months, then you can easily manage that as well. Yes, this paper is less calculative and more theoretical. I would say 85% of uh, the quantum of the paper is theory based with supporting 15 to 20 percent calculations. So yes, it is about drafting the answers, 
but the way to draft the answer, how to start your answer, what to write, what not to write, all these things will be very well uh, uh, <coughs> delivered to you by me and this will make you really good in these areas. Now, how APM is different from performance management? Yeah, we all know that basically this paper uh, is, has a strong connection with performance management. The base paper is PM. So PM, those who, uh, obviously many of you must have done PM, but there might be few students here who came through exemption and may be giving APM. First of all, I just want to first give you the idea for those students who have done, the majority of the students who have done PM and now opting for APM. So yes, the bases are coming from PM, but the level or uh, the level that the examiner now will use for testing the topics, the concepts will be different. At PM level, I do agree that you uh, the focus was on calculations and the focus was on what the numbers mean. But here at APM level, you have to take more strategic focus, which means these topics, te te techniques that you have uh, studied earlier will not be tested in the way it were tested earlier. But now from the strategic point of view, these will be tested. First of all, I just want to tell you the topics which you will again see at APM level and in recent examination attempts, to be really honest, examiner has tested the basic conceptual things of PM. And if you just look at the examiner report, surprisingly, examiner did mention that this is a brought forward knowledge and we assume that you know this information. So for me, it's a positive thing. For you, it should be a positive thing that, okay, the previous knowledge somehow may come in the paper. So I just want to give you the names of those uh, topics like activity-based costing, like target costing, like life cycle costing, like environmental management accounting. Now these all were basics of PM. Similarly, a very huge focus is on one of the sections of PM that is performance measurement if you, re, if you recall. In that there were two major things, financial performance and non-financial performance. So yes, at this level, uh, financial performance, non-financial performance is vastly tested. The models like balance scorecard, the models like building block model, you will see these models coming up again in this paper. But with a different focus, but with a different way to test these topics will be uh, uh, will be very much visible here. So these are the topics that I just roughly took the name plus budgets. Yes, the basic idea of incremental budget, zero based budget, activity based budget, uh, uh, <coughs> the rolling budgets that you have covered earlier, you should recall those things. You should recall those things plus a bit of planning and operational variances, the basics of those again may come in the paper. Now, now I will uh, address two types of students here. One, those who have done their PM and they uh, are in a position where they are like, oh, I gave my PM 10 years back. 10 years, okay, I, I, that's too much. Maybe five years back, maybe two years back. Maybe one year back, maybe six months, I don't know. Don't worry, don't worry. In my APM portal, I've covered all the topics of PM. So whenever there is a need to link with PM, the topics are covered in the portal. This will brush up your basics. These will give you the basic knowledge and will prepare you for APM. So first we will recap how and what these things were when it was your PM and now how it will come in your APM. So that's very good news I would say for those who are a bit worried, oh I don't remember my PM. Now coming towards the second group here and that group is 
uh, related to those students who came from exemptions. And they're like, oh, we don't know about these topics. Maybe. Don't worry. As I said earlier, my portal includes these basic topics of F5, which means, again, for those who are new, they will watch those videos, they will understand the concept, and they can easily relate with APM. So, I hope I've addressed both the group of students. Now, 60 to 65 percent of the, maybe 55 to 60 percent of the topics I can, uh, I can mention here that relates to PM. But the way they will be examined now, that is different. The way the examiner will ask the questions, that is different. And that is not just different, that is really interesting as well. Because who are you in this paper, it's very important. So here, I want to give you the clarity, what will be your status in this paper? who you will be considered in this paper. So when you were at PM level, performance management level, so you were a management accountant. A management accountant is a person who works within an organization, who does planning, controlling, decision making, and uh, uh, evaluates the performance of different departments. Now, at APM level, you are no more a management accountant. At APM level, now you are considered as a consultant. Yes, it's very important term to note down. Now here you are considered as a consultant. Now you are a consultant who will who will give advices, who will give suggestions, who will give recommendations. To whom? To whom? So just imagine uh, if you go to a doctor, what do you think? Is that doctor your health consultant? Come on, say yes or no, guys. Come on, I want you to interact with me in the chat box. So do you think that doctor is your health consultant? Yes? Uh, I can't see any answers in the comment section. Now I can see here. Right. Now if you go to a doctor, so what do you do? What you do when you go to a doctor? You go to a doctor and you uh, tell the doctor what issue you have, what disease you have, what problem you have. You discuss your problems. You discuss your issues exactly as people are mentioning in the chat box. Very nice. Now, what doctor does then? Come on, what doctor will do? Doctor will carefully listen to you and then will try to diagnose the issue, will try to find out the problem that you are facing, and will come up with some kind of a recommendation. Like, okay, this is the problem, and this is the cure. These are the medications. This is how you have to take those medications. Which means the doctor came up with a plan. The doctor came up with a cure plan. Now, you went to the doctor, you spent your money, you took that uh, recommendation and the prescription and everything, and now you are not following that. You are not following that. So, would that be a wise thing? Totally not. Now, for example, you thought that doctor, that that doctor is not competent, which means if that doctor is not competent, why would you go to that doctor at first place? You will never go to that doctor, which clearly indicates that you trust the doctor. You, you have complete faith and belief in the doctor, which clearly gives you the idea, my friends, that yes, you believe that the health consultant is good enough to advise you and will tell you the cure. Similarly, like a health doctor, you are a business doctor. You are a business consultant. This is the beauty of this paper. The best thing I like about this paper is that this paper develops your mind strategically, develops your mind in such a way that you are able to manage your business. It develops your mind uh, that is needed by a business owner to do a business. So as you are a consultant, because you are giving proper consultation like a business owner, that is the best thing about this paper. So this paper is the one that I normally say every time. 
that this paper develops your skills to be an entrepreneur because if you are a consultant you have wide knowledge about all the types of different business industry this is the another best thing about the paper that whether it's a pharmaceutical business the client will come to you whether it's a uh, whether it's an education sector business the client will come to you whether it's a transportation company the client will come to you whether it's a uh, oil exploration company the client will come to you whether it's an hospital the client will come to you whether uh, it's 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 an uh, audit firm or any consultancy firm or an audit firm the client will come to you which means you are covering so many different business sectors and as you are a business health consultant your client will come to you and they want you to improve their business they want you to tell them the advices suggestions strategies plans actions to improve their business by resolving their business issues by resolving their business problems and that is the best thing about this paper which means it sets up your mindset to be a future entrepreneur as well now you might be thinking where the client will meet us where is the client who will come to us my friends your client will meet you on the day of examination there will be three clients that will meet you on the day of examination one client will be a major client having 50 marks weightage second client would be a, 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 a secondary client coming to you with a 25 mark weightage and third also a 25 mark weightage client this means now you have three clients that you uh, have to take care of they will come to you they will explain their situation to you it's like a similar thing and what is that like you go to the doctor you explain your situation in the same way the business will come to you they will explain you their situation in the same way as dr kefri listens your health concern you also have to listen their business health issues and then you have to come up with the advices recommendations justifications evaluations and that is the work of a consultant so my friends I want to congratulate you if you opted for this paper this paper is not just a paper just forget about the passing ratios just forget uh, that whether it's easy or difficult just focus on the content the quantum the expertise the help the guidance that it will provide you in your future career growth that is the best thing about this paper because 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 generally we are more financial focused when you take SBR paper the focus is on financial numbers when you take AFM exam the focus is on financial numbers when you take taxation paper the focus is on financial numbers when you take audit and assurance the focus is on checking financial numbers where is non-financial in an accountant's life so this paper makes you a complete accountant this paper makes you a complete accountant and why I'm saying this is because it fills that gap of non-financial that people doesn't have as such and that makes a person a complete business human being so the paper focuses on both financial and non-financials which are very important for any organization success so I congratulate you all that you have opted for a very good paper now you just have to stick to it study in the right way and you see how it will help you in the future so guys are you happy yes or no great now Another important thing that I want to explain you here before I move on to the next area which I'd normally say it's very very encouraging for those who opted for this paper and what is that listen very carefully my friends a business owner as I said this paper develops you uh, develops the entrepreneur skills in you which means being a business owner 
what you do you are looking at the business from strategic point of view and you hire people who work for you like you hire an accountant a person who has done his or her sbr number 2 you hire a person who is a tax consultant must have done atx this means you hire an financial manager who has done his afm you hire an auditor who audits your business that is he or she has done advance audit and assurance this means that it's the p5 apm that develop the skills of a business owner and that business owner then will hire sbr will hire afm will hire atx and will hire triple a so just imagine how powerful this paper is as it develops the skills a person must have to improve and run their own business or help the businesses strategically to achieve their missions and visions and objectives coming back to pm 60% of the areas you will see are coming from pm but in an advanced version second a very hot debate is uh, about sbl and the connection of apm yes i would say that now it is good for those who have done sbl and coming towards apm similarly it is also good for those who are doing apm now and will do sbl it's equally beneficial for both the groups so my friends apm and sbl does have similarities 20 to 25% of the content you will see similar in both the paper either the first you do apm or you first do sbl it doesn't matter but the topics are similar but the way they are tested is different once again so first of all i will target that first group of students who have done their sbl and now are in apm first of all i just want to check in my session right now how many people are those so please can you quickly tell me those who have already done their sbl and now are preparing for apm how many please just just mention the chat box right so i can see a good number of students who have already done their sbl and now are opting for apm so now first of all what is the good news for you people the good you news is you know the topics like porter's five forces you know pest analysis you know mandelo matrix you know bcg matrix you know certain models that you have covered at sbl level so that's the positive thing the basic of the model is clear in your mind but the negative point is that you don't know how this will come in apm so what i have done what i have done i have made it very simple in my apm lectures i start with the basic concepts of these models i start with the basic understanding of these models i start with a basic discussion about the models which means i give them the recap what mendelo is what pest is what porters is so they are able to recall what they have done in sbl but the major thing that is important for them now is the transition from sbl towards apm and that is what i have done it very clearly very smartly i will transit you from sbl towards apm by giving you the idea how pest now will be tested how porters now will be tested how mendelo matrix now will be tested and that thing will complete you as an apm consultant so the good point is you know the basics the bad point is you don't know how it will come in apm but the good point is you came to the right person who will give you the idea how these now will be tested in apm having said that i will just give you a quick idea before i cater the other group of students those who are done with their sbl who know what sbl is so there is a topic by the name of porter's five forces so what have you 
uh, understood with porters when you were in SBL? Can you please give me a quick idea in the chat box? What do you think porters is useful for? Okay, I can see options, external factors that influence business for external market analysis, <laughs> for uh, understanding whether that particular market is competitive or not to assess the external environment. Which means, for example, if you want to open a business in a particular market, so you want to assess the environment, you want to assess the competitiveness there. Whether that particular area uh, is a one where you can uh, where you can grab major competitive advantage or not. So you assess these five forces like uh, bargaining power of customers, bargaining power of suppliers, competition within the industry, threat of new entrant, threat of substitute. You consider these forces to see whether your investment in that particular market will be useful and will provide you competitive advantage or not. That is SBL. But when it comes to APM, when it comes to APM, so remember APM has a more accounting focus and is more specifically concerned with the measurement, control and improvement of performance in the financial and the uh, quantitative sense. Now, when I say porters in APM, so what will you do? What is the difference? So listen, my friends, you will be operating in an industry. You are already operating in an industry and the question will ask you that you have to come up with the indicators. You have to come up with the indicators to assess the forces, these pressures and also to come up with a plan how to uh, handle the pressures, how to cater the pressures and how to improve your business performance, how to improve your business performance. So a quick basic idea and those who are done with SBL, they will understand this point. Those who haven't done SBL, come on, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, I will cater your needs as well after this example. So listen my friends, where I was, I was giving you an example, for example, the threat of new entrant is high in a in, a, in an industry where you are working, which means everybody, new person, new people, new businesses can easily enter into uh, the market. The threat of entry is high. Now, what are the measures as a consultant you would advise your client to use to check these may to these pressures? how you would advise your client what KPIs to use, what indicators to use to check these pressures. So what are the indicators that will help them to assess this pressure? So you can suggest them, for example, number of patented products. Now number of patented products is an indicator. The more the patented products you have, this means you are secured. The more the patented products you have, this means you are secured even though people are entering but your products have a proper patent with you, you have a copyright on that so you are safe. So the indicator is number of patented products. So the question might ask you to come up with an indicator. Come on, can you please suggest me what indicator should I use to check this pressure? So you will say number of patented products. Similarly, bargaining power of customers. What is an indicator to check the bargaining power of the customers? So you can suggest them percentage discount allowed, number percentage discount allowed, uh, number of customers in the market. These will help them to check the pressure and manage the pressure. Understood? So the indicator suggestion you need to give. Now coming towards the second aspect is how to manage such pressure. If the bargaining power of customers is high, is high. So what is the way to manage? 
enter into long term contracts with them if you enter into long term contracts so that through this what will happen you are managing this pressure you are managing the bargaining power of customers by having long term contracts which means then things will be in your control somehow so the way to uh, way to tackle the pressure is what you have to mention as a consultant as a consultant so that business financial numbers business profits and business overall performance doesn't get affected so this is the difference when it comes to sbl apm take an example of porter's five forces yes guys those who have done sbl is this clear to all of you yes or no i need your comments in the comment section understood the difference yes or no great now please mention those who haven't done sbl and apm is first time for them yes please how many of you who are who haven't done their sbl and apm is first for them okay now those group of students who are doing apm first and sbl is uh, not uh, not uh, something that you have covered don't worry the 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 positive thing is you don't know how it was studied in sbl so anything that you will learn here is from the apm perspective so you will get a new fresh perspective and that is the only perspective that you need to understand and you don't have to move towards a transition phase that's the best thing for you people but you might be thinking i don't know the basis of mendelo i don't know what porter's five forces is as you were giving the example sir i don't know what pest is don't worry as i mentioned earlier my portal is structured in such a way that i start with the basics of these models i start with pest i explain the basics of the pest and then move towards apm so you by watching those videos will understand the basics of pest basic of sort basic of porter's five forces basics of mandelo matrix and then you can easily understand the perspective of apm as well so again it is equally beneficial for you if you haven't done your sbl you can directly start with the apm and these topics will help you later on in your sbl as well so guys i hope you understood 55 to 60% coming from pm 25 to 30% coming from sbl and like this uh, you have a paper of apm but the areas that are tested are differently and are tested from apm perspective the paper is divided into four sections these are the four sections <coughs> today you can see these four sections strategic planning and control performance management information systems and development in technology strategic performance measurement and performance evaluation these are the four sections so we'll cover each and everything from these four sections and the last day that we'll meet uh, will be our grand revision at the end of the term and that will be the day where my revision will be based on these four sections i'll start with this section we'll revise all the things that comes under this section then we'll come to this one then this one then this one so remember those who are enrolled students have a good look at these four sections and at the end the revision will be based on these four sections as well great the paper structure the paper includes section a which is of 50 marks uh, the section that i just showed you earlier so it will give you the clarity that section a will focus on uh, syllabus sections a b and c that i mentioned here a b and c okay so this will focus on these areas 50 mark question now uh, the 50 mark question will have 40 technical marks 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks for me it's like focus on 40 technical marks and get 10 as a bonus the best thing is you are getting free 
10 marks as bonus. So 40 technical and 10 bonus professional marks. I'll come to those later on. <clears throat> this section A question will test all the professional skills uh, that I'll just show you later on. So this is section A of your paper. Then coming towards section B of your paper and this comprises of 225 marks question. In these 225 mark question, each question will have 20 technical marks and 5 professional marks. Again, it's like focus on 20 technical and get 5 free bonus, reward, incentive. Uh, what should I say? I don't know. It, these are free if you able to manage the way I explain you. Okay. And one of the section B, uh, uh, sorry, these are the section B, two questions, as you can see here, uh, that basically relates to your APM. And one of the section B question will come from this section area D of the syllabus. Okay. So, uh, this is clear. The paper structure is clear to everybody. It's a 100 mark paper. Now, Moving towards professional marks, as I mentioned in a section A 50 mark question, uh, 10 are professional, 40 are technical. For section B 25 mark question, 20 are technical and 5 are professional, uh, which means all together if I say that 10 marks from section A are professional marks and 10 marks from section B are professional marks, as I said, 5 for a, uh, section B, one question, five for section B, second question. Now, what are those professional marks? I have mentioned this. It's like in total, buy 80 technical marks and get 20 professional free, 20 professional free. So my friends, how can we grab those easy bonus marks? How can we grab those easy marks? The first advice is complete 100% of the paper. If you complete 100% of the paper means if you solve 80 technical marks, then you will get those 20 bonus marks. First advice. Advice number two, to get these 20 professional bonus marks, bonus marks, you simply need to follow the requirement. You need to read the requirement well. You need to understand the verbs in the requirement, the objects in the requirement. And the way I'm going to teach you in my classes, what is the importance of verb and what is the importance of object, it will give you a lot more clarity. So if you just follow the requirements well, you are able to grab these 20 bonus marks under the name of professional skills. So my friends, two pieces of advice, complete 80 technical mark and follow the instructions. You can grab 20 professional marks and you can get that bonus that I'm talking about. Now, <coughs> categorically talking about those professional marks. So those professional marks are divided into four things. Four skills are needed. The first skill is of communication. The second skill relates to analysis and evaluation. Third skill relates to skepticism and fourth relates to commercial acumen. I will not go into details of that right now because in my live sessions, in my live classes that I will conduct on a weekly basis, the question that we're going to do in those live classes, we will understand how to grab those bonus marks and relates to these professional marks and that would give you the idea what communication is, what analysis and evaluation is, what skepticism is and what is commercial acumen. But just to give you a small hint in relation to these four, so communication marks relates to how you communicate with the audience. Now, usually you are writing a report to the CEO, you are addressing to the CEO, which means the way you communicate with the CEO should be a professional communication. The report that you are writing should include the format like 
to from date subject the way you present your answer it should be a one having a logical order use of headings proper subheadings and the professional words professional language will give you marks for communication i'm just giving you a basic idea the details will be covered when we move towards our classes and the live sessions so that is communication second analysis and evaluation now normally the term analysis means to find out the root cause to find out the reasons so how you analyze you analyze by using the numbers the data that is given to you so any number data given to you in the question you just use that you find out the hidden facts the root causes the reasons for and that is your analysis now such reasons such hidden facts helps you in your evaluation now what is the term evaluate very key term is evaluate very key term when i say evaluation so we consider both aspects the positive angle of a subject matter the negative angle of a subject matter in evaluation as we give our judgment so we look at the positive sides and the negative sides and then we come towards a judgment so considering the pros considering the cons of anything is evaluation so if you have done that balanced evaluation if you have done that balanced assessment if you have done that balanced positive negative assessment you are getting professional marks for analysis and evaluation that is a basic idea third skepticism very simple questioning attitude questioning attitude you can't just rely on the statements that are given to you maybe in the scenario the ceo was saying okay this is what we are really good at you can't rely them a production manager saying our quality issues are very low you cannot just rely them so skepticism means you need to have the questioning attitude you need to challenge their statements whenever needed whenever needed and remember this is not an advance audit and assurance paper that skepticism will be scattered everywhere in the scenario it's not like that few areas where skepticism skill is needed questioning attitude and i did give you the example for example some of the statement given by the production manager or company key representative is giving you some information you can't just rely on that you need to be skeptical you need to raise question you need to keep this in mind that maybe they are doing misrepresentation okay fourth is commercial acumen which means business sense practicality of the business is what you have to consider which means if you are suggesting as i said you are a consultant it's your work to suggest it is your work to recommend it is your work to uh, 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 give them the suggestions and how what to do how to do but the, all those suggestions all those recommendation should have a business sense should consider the business practicality should consider whether it is doable implementable or not don't come out of something which is ideal which is something that cannot be achieved it should be practical reasonable achievable and should be relevant to the business should be related to the business which means you have to consider all the aspects you those you have to consider all the aspects that is not just focus on financial numbers not just focus on figures financial figures you have to focus on the non financial aspects as well and consider whether those are achievable practical related relevant implementable for the business or not that is commercial business sense that you have that business sense in you that you know what business practicality is a quick example your client is totally dependent on manual accounting work so you came to your client and said 
come on one fine morning from tomorrow i'm implementing sap here is this practical enough do they really be able to adjust sap no it's not easy for them this will result in lot of resistance by the employees they don't have those sophisticated systems in place which means not viable not practical not easy to implement so don't come up with those suggestions which they cannot implement commercial acumen so if you demonstrate these skills if you demonstrate these skills while you are tackling with 80 technical marks if you are demonstrating these skills while you are tackling with 80 technical marks you can grab 20 bonus marks you can grab 20 bonus marks sir now when we we'll learn all this thing don't worry very soon when we start with our live classes you will understand okay this is how we need to grab those easy 20 marks so congratulations my friends you have a very fantastic opportunity and what is that grab a t and get 20 free with rizwan mania right guys interesting are you all enjoying yes or no i need your feedback so far does apm look different yes or no great thanks for the feedback now coming towards coming towards a very important uh slide here but before i move towards this i just want to quickly tell you remember now what your position is remember you are a business consultant i did mention earlier from today for me you are not just peter for me you are not just alex for me you are not just ahmed for me you are not just uh, uh uh virat right so for me you are a business consultant so just quickly write in the chat box who you are guys come on right consultant everyone from today you all are what consultants consultant business consultants great everyone everyone perfect so you are a business consultant and as i said consultant does have wide industry knowledge and it prepares you to work in any organization at the strategic level or it will make your business owner as well So congratulations for opting APM, and in two and a half month, you all with me will become consultants, inshallah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> coming towards this very important slide, and these are the examinable verbs that you have seen in the past in your previous exam, previous papers, like briefly describe, explain, analyze, application. discuss describe okay now from here comes apm based verbs these these are high level verbs that one needs to understand in apm and especially the two that i have highlighted here what are the verbs you know these are the verbs uh like evaluate this justify this discuss this uh compare these things these are the verbs so in apm the most tested verb is evaluate evaluate now let me tell you what evaluate is and then i'll tell you a very good news what is evaluate evaluate means to look at the positive side the negative side and then come with a judgment and then give your judgment looking at the positive things and the negative things very similar work that is done by a judge in the court now what the judge does judge will ask two lawyers to come one lawyer will be uh, in favor of that case one will be against that case so what judge will do judge will ask lawyer one come on what are your positive points so lawyer one will tell the positive things about the case 
judge two tell me the negative points about the case so the judge two will come and tell the negative things about the case so there will be two different opinions then judge will use their expertise and will evaluate the positives and the negatives and will come towards the conclusion towards the conclusion so remember consultants because you are all a consultant so you have to find out scenario based positives scenario based negatives your client will come to you your client will come to you and will ask you to evaluate for example evaluate my uh, my system evaluate my system my business system for example so the verb is to evaluate so the verb is to evaluate and what to evaluate business system business system so system is the object system is the object and verb is the evaluate so this evaluation will be done for the system will be done for this object so what will you do you will find out the positive things about the system you will find out the negative things about the system positives negatives and then you will give your conclusion evaluate most tested verb of the paper most tested verb of the paper evaluate positives negatives positives negatives things about the system i hope this is clear to all of you i hope you have understood all these things in a very clear way now the best part is do you remember one of the skill one of the professional skill was of analysis and evaluation yes yeah and this verb is evaluate as well which means if the verb evaluate comes in the paper if the verb evaluates comes in the paper so you will be getting twice sorry i should say you will be getting two benefits by doing one thing if you are fulfilling this verb evaluate if you are answering to this verb evaluate coming up with the positive and the negatives so you are getting technical marks for this evaluation you are getting technical marks for this evaluation yes or no yes at the same time if you have done that professionally if you have done that uh, in such a way that you came up with the balanced evaluation you came up with the balanced assessment and you did uh came up with lot of evidences from the scenario in doing this evaluation if you came up with the lot of evidences from the scenario evidences from the scenario the word is evidences evidences from the scenario and you did that assessment in a balanced way covered all the aspects so not only will you get technical marks for the evaluation you'll get extra bonus marks under the heading of professional skill mentioned there analysis and evaluation wow wow that's just the start my friends just assume how i gonna give the clarity for the professional marks later on so you are getting technical marks for evaluation at the same time you are getting professional marks if you have done that in such a way that you come up with the balanced assessment and with proper evidences what you are saying so you are getting bonus marks under the heading of analysis and evaluation so doing one thing and getting two benefits did you like this guys yes or no interesting evaluation <laughs> done second most used word is justification i normally give the very basic example for justification for example you need to marry a person that you really like you need to marry a person that you really like the love of your life your parents your family is against that marriage what would you do what would you do what would you do okay they came to you come on tell me 
Why do you want to marry that person? Justify it. Justify it. What you're going to do? You know, come on, don't be naughty here. You know what you're going to do. You will come up with so many reasons. So many valid reasons. So many valid, or I would say you will make so many reasons valid here. You will justify that, hello, I need to marry that person because our mindset never matches. Oh, sorry. It does matches. I don't know what works for you. I want to marry that person because of this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason, that reason, this reason. So many justifications. So many convincing points. You will come up from the scenario to justify why you want to marry. Similarly, you need a car. You need a car from your company. They are not giving you. They are asking why you need a car. You will justify them. Because if I have a car, I will be motivated. I will be on time. My efficiency will improve. I don't have to travel from public transport. Blah, 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 blah. And I can even drop your employees home at as well. <laughs> so, I can even... I can even drop your employees at home as well. That's the best thing. Boss, I'll even drop you at your home. So you'll justify. You will tell them, come on, car is very important for me. So similarly, when you are required to justify anything, listen guys, you are required to justify anything. You are required to recommend anything. Remember, remember, you have to use scenario-based reasons for that. Scenario-based points for that. Scenario-based practical points for that. Scenario-based. All your justifications should be scenario-based. Understood? Yes or no? For example, the question says, recommend with justification. Recommend a course of action with justification. Now, if you are justifying it, you are using scenario-based points and then you are recommending based on that. You are recommending based on that, so you will get technical marks. You will get technical marks because you are recommending some course of action by doing proper justification, scenario-based reasons. But if that recommendation that you give is practically achievable for the business, if it is practically possible for the business, if it, it, it is practically implementable for the business, you are not just getting, you are not just getting technical marks, but you are also getting marks under the heading of commercial acumen. Wow! Commercial acumen. So again, it's like buy one, get two free. Buy one, get two free. Understood? This is the magic of APM. And this is I'm going to teach you how to grab marks in APM and ensure that you pass in the upcoming attempt. So guys, this is how I related the verbs, the technical marks with the professional marks. And I have somehow proved that yes, these are the bonus marks that you have. Guys, understood. Now, the basic and the last thing, how do we teach at Wifi? Sir, why should we trust Wifi? Why should we trust you? Why should we take classes from your institute and not some other institute? Because at Wifi, we have our recorded sessions. These are just not basic Zoom recordings, these are the animated recorded classes using learning glass technology, the one that you can see right now. So these are learning glass based lectures with the help of animation. I will teach you the concepts. I will explain you the concept through the help of animations. When I say water, you will see water everywhere. When I say plane, you can see plane going from here till there. That is any, the power of animation. So 75 to 80 percent content will be recorded based using learning glass technology. But we'll not leave you alone. It's not that we sell the lectures and we are like, hello, do whatever you want to do. No. We'll give you a planner. 
will give you a proper plan to follow. So you will cover those chapters, sections according to our planner. You will cover according to our planner. Topics to complete in one week, two weeks, three weeks will be given to you in form of a planner. Then these are the live classes that you will have. These are the live classes. Every week we'll have one live class, six live classes I'm going to take. And in those live classes, yes, we'll be doing a question live. And that too, the focus will be on professional marks, as I mentioned earlier. So very important to be part of the live sessions. But the most important thing is the planner that we'll share with you in relation to recorded sessions. So you have to complete those topics before that live class to be held. So if you complete the topics before that live class to be held, this means that live class will become more effective for you. Just in case if I give you an example, I said you have to complete topic one, two and three before this live class. We'll be doing a new question relation to topic one, two and three. So now if you complete that topic before coming to the live class, you will understand that much, much better. So live classes are really crucial and connected with the planner given for the recorded sessions. E-notes are downloadable notes you have. You can download all the chapter notes in one go, compile those together to make a complete book for yourself. Then we have a very special assessment model by the name of TTA model. TTA model. Now what is TTA model? The first T is Test yourself sections. Test yourself. Once you will complete topic 1, 2, 3, 4, on your portal you will see a section by the name of test yourself. Why is that? To boost up the confidence. To check your own understanding. And these will be time-based sessions. 36 minutes complete one 25 mark question. 90 minutes 45 minutes complete one section B question. 90 minutes complete one section A question. You have to time bound yourself. Test yourself. So you have to do practice using test yourself section. This is the first T of this TTA model. Second T is the testing platform. The testing platform which is similar to ACC exam environment. You will practice these on testing platform to understand the exam environment in a better way. Third a, T, T, A. A is assignments. Assignments. Now, if after every live class that you're going to have, we'll give you one assignment. We'll give you one assignment. And that one assignment, and that one assignment, you will solve time-based practice and you will submit us. We'll check and give you the feedback. So, after every, every, every Every life class will be given the assignment. So that is our TTA model. Then two mocks, two mocks. One mock will check and give you the feedback completely. Two mocks will be held with one mock will check and give the feedback. But for both the mocks, there will be debrief sessions that will be conducted by me. Debrief sessions where I will explain the entire mock after the mock has been performed. Then the revision. Last month is of revision. Last month is of revision. So you will be having 9 to 10 hours revision session in the month of November. So according to my planner, you have to complete the content by X date. We'll share the planner with you now tomorrow in your paid groups. And then last month will be the revision month. Not only this, we have a teacher assistant facility in Wifi as well. Now, what is that? Our dedicated teacher assistant are part of the group. Our dedicated teacher assistant will be part of the group. They'll be part of the Wifi group. They will help you in your queries. They will help you in your planners. They will help you in achieving the plan. And not only this, they will track your performance. They will track your performance on a regular basis, regular basis. Now, what is performance tracking? Performance tracking means that they will check whether you achieved the target or not. In every 15 days, they will send you the trackers where you are behind. We'll not leave you alone. 
they will tell you how much percentage topics you have completed and to pay some. So this is the performance tracking that we do at WIFI. And as I say, WIFI is unique in providing quality education. And why I'm saying is, so this is the last point, that now if you follow everything as I mentioned here, so it's like getting an earning points. At WIFI, we transform your learning into a game. And what I mean to say by this is, very simple thing. Have you ever played a game? Yeah, you have. Once you pass one stage, you get you earn points. Second stage, you earn more points, then more points, then more points. And this, then you are so much rich in terms of your points that you buy something good in a game. Similarly, if you complete the recorded sessions on time, you will earn points. If you attend the live classes, you will earn points. If you do the assignments, you will earn points. If you appear in the mock and pass, you will earn points. If you pass the final paper, you will earn points. And after that, based on the points that you have earned, we will give you good high discounts in your next ACCA papers with WIFI. So it's not just following these to pass the paper but also to earn more and more points to get more and more discount benefits. So that is our gamification model at WIFI. We'll share the details in our paid WhatsApp group. I hope this is clear to all of you so far. Guys, interesting, yes or no? Share your feedbacks. Now, before I move on to my last area of the session, I would like to announce that we have added four competent, competent people in our team. Jerry Joseph will be teaching ACCA financial reporting in English language. Prabha will be teaching ACCA uh, strategic business reporting in English language at WIFI. Along with them, those who want to cover SBR in Urdu, we are launching Amjad Hussain and Sania Asif will be teaching ACCA TX and ATX in English language. The best thing is we are offering flat 30% off for this session. If you enroll with this tutor, you will get the same quality education as what I mentioned earlier. How we teach at WIFI is same in all the cases. So if you're interested in any professional papers of SBR and ATX, don't hesitate. Be with us and I'll make sure as a CEO, you get the same education as you will get in APM and as you get in AAA, as you get in SBL. Okay. So my friends, now it's time to come up with the answers of certain questions if you have. I'm sharing the number of my support team. Those students who are still planning and thinking whether to join or not, take your decision, contact our support team and enroll in my APM course and follow the plans from tomorrow and start your studies and get successful inshallah. So this is the number of our support team. Students who want to enroll can contact my team uh, and get the enrollment details. Others, if you are already part of the group from tomorrow, once we'll share the plan, you have to start your studies and be ready for my first live class. Any questions? No. Uh, Twinkle, I don't think that would be a good idea. If you want to appear for both the papers, I think you should start your studies now. Otherwise, uh, after result, this will be difficult for you. <coughs> Live class details, the timings and everything will be shared with you in the planner. So once we'll share the plan, you will get to know about the live classes and the timings of that. Okay, great guys. Thank you very much for being part of my session. Once again, trusting Wifi, Rizwan Mania, struggle for APM will continue again. Please share your feedbacks about today's session. Did you like the session? Did you understand what APM is? 
are you celebrating why you opted for APM and is APM now more clear to you share your feedbacks guys how was the today's orientation session did you like the session understood things or not everyone please I need your feedbacks I need your inputs how was the session so I need same kind of interaction activeness in the live classes and I encourage these things so uh, hope to see you all in my first live sessions and follow the whatsapp group and the plans that are shared in the group that is the most important 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 thing I'm also mentioning my own number here if you want to ask any question you can contact me as well uh, using this number this is my own number okay this is my number this is the supports number you can note down the number I am also in the group with this number thank you very much guys yes you can appear for APM and SBL together in one attempt but you need to start studies now I just saw one of the question thank you very very much hope to see you all in the first live session until then take care and start the studies as per plan enjoy APM with Wi-Fi and inshallah we'll all succeed take care Rizwan Mania signing off from Wi-Fi